Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre of Majestic Wire Artworks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful pendant. And this is a BB craft video because I'm dedicating it to these beautiful shell pearls. And um, they have this fantastic iridescent pearl on here. It's got, you see, pinks and greens and, and yellows and sometimes blue um, color on it. I mean, it's very mild, but it's there. And they're just gorgeous. So this, is, this video is dedicated for BB Craft. And what you're gonna need to make this video is you are going to need 20 gauge wire. You're gonna need three pieces, 18 inches long, one piece, 12 inches long. You're going to need 20, excuse me, 28 gauge weaving wire and you're going to need seven and a half feet of it to um, do your weaving and you're going to need a permanent marker you're going to need your flush cutters you're going to need your round nose pliers your chain nose pliers now all my pliers were purchased from bb craft i do have the links always written in the description and when I use the BB craft pliers and or most of the time and the links are there excuse me and um, I, it's not saying you need to use BB craft <clears throat> pliers by no means but I um, at the beginning of my YouTube career I was constantly being asked where do you get the pliers you use? Because I want one similar to yours. And so I got some through them, and so and that's the ones I'm using. So um, anyways, let's move on. You're going to need a file. Whichever type of file you use, I'm using a metal file like this. Um, it's a little bit finer than the, the nail files I had been using. And course you're going to need your pearl and uh, a ruler and I think that's everything that you're going to need so let's start by um, we're going to prep the pearl now I didn't do anything with the pearl this is natural and it made the pearl a little bit lopsided for me so I this time I'm going to do something different see when they when they made it it must be some type of dipping process and it's got the bulge on one side and not the other. One side's really nice and smooth. So we're gonna take this file and we're gonna gently file that down just to prep the pearl, just so that it can sit better. Now, if we had it sitting like this, it wouldn't matter, but because we've got it side to side, it makes it go off center a bit. We want it to be filed very nicely and carefully so that it still looks nice. So if yours ends up, because you've got um, a coarser file or something, ends up a little bit rough, what I would do is maybe um, introduce some, very carefully dab some clear nail polish on it. Um, or just, you know, be careful and then you don't have to do anything. It's gonna, it's got a larger hole, but it's better for it to be flattish and large because it's large anyways. And it's, gonna, it's a little bit time consuming, I'm finding, but I think it's gonna be worth it in the end. there okay so that doesn't look too bad at all right okay and it still has a little bit of a bump but I think that's acceptable so I'm gonna leave it at that I don't want to do too much now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the weave now I'm demonstrating it with shorter wires 
as I always do. So you're going to take your first wire and your 20 gauge wires, that is the three 18 inch 20 gauge wires. And you're going to measure about six inches, five and a half, six inches from the end because we're going to weave four inches. And I find you tend to move that way. If it makes it easier for you because of the type of weave it is, you can always grab the wires and tug them out by holding your weave with your fingers and pulling with uh, and grabbing it with the chain nose pliers. I find it very easy to do with this weave. Not all weaves you can do that. So if you want to go closer to the edge to start, um, that's your choice. Experiment. Okay, so I'm going to lasso them together. So that they um, are easy, easily held together. Now all I do is just wrap around one at a time and I make the edges um, graduated so it's easy for me to see which wire is what. That's why I recommend six inches so that you've got room to do that. Well this, this first one you could do five inches and this one would be six inches. So I've given you, I believe I've given you enough length at the end to work with that way. And um, there, now they're all lassoed and they stay together quick. It's very easy to hold them together now. Okay, so this is called the one, two, three weave. For those that have my membership of um, the first level, it has all, well, all the levels have this, um, but the first one has the technical videos. I go into more extensive detail on how to do that. So what I've done is I've been down here and I've gone under all three and now I'm just come up from the top and I'm wrapping around the top wire, wire number one. And I'm going back up underneath to the top and now I'm coming down the first two and going down between the bottom two wires, two and three. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so I've wrapped around this one, now I'm wrapping around that one, and now I'm coming up between the two top wires, and I'm going, going over top of the bottom two wires, and this is one movement, and I'm coming up under all three layers, and now going around the top wire. Okay, so that is actually one whole, um, oh, what do you call it? Hmm, my words aren't coming out right now. Okay, so one whole pattern, I would call it. It's not the word I wanted, but it works. Okay, so one pattern plus one more loop. And I always, whenever you're, um, compressing you always stop at this point or whenever you're setting it down you stop it at this point because it holds it steady the best okay and that's where we're going to end it too when you finish it off you're going to end it at that point so let's consider that the end of the cycle and now we're going to continue now we're going to go over top of the first two down between the bottom two wires up between the top two wires i, I should get this closer Okay, and then down and up under all three and now I'm going to wrap around the top wire so I go down between the bottom um, top two wires and I'm up again now over top of the top two wires down between the bottom two wires okay up between the top two wires and now I'm down covering over top of the bottom two wires underneath all three and then around and down between the top two wires to go around the top wire. Now as you see this pattern there's more wires wrapped around the top than there is in the bottom. Now this is a beautiful weave for doing this type of project because when you're bending it here you cannot do it when you've got too many wires. So this has less wires and gives us more flexibility.
Now a lot of people do a looser weave that has those great big spaces in, and I personally have a visual dislike for some of them, and I like it when it's um, more compact, more solid looking and so that's why I created this type of weave so that we have that flexibility of, of the bending um, if you were doing something where you're feeding wire in the middle this would not work but for what we're doing here this this is the beauty of this this weave and that's why we're using this weave for this project so I recommend you doing um, five or six patterns of that and then you take your chain nose pliers, or if you've got strong fingernails, compress it by pushing, whoops, compress it by pushing like this. And um, do that every five or six, and you're gonna weave four inches of weave, okay? And then once you're done, if you so desire to uh, tug out wires closer to give you more working wire, um, I would recommend doing a safety bend first on each. Go like this. Because I've done it where it's stuck and then all of a sudden it let go and I pulled out the whole wire. So if you're going to slide wires, I would recommend giving it a bend like this. Now it's just a personal tip for, from experience. And then at the end, then you just um, slide these wires but again we don't want them too far because you need a little bit of uh, wire to work with but I mean if it, it that's your safety net it's gonna make it so it won't pull through uh, when you're tugging wires okay so then you're just gonna move them all so that they're about the same length right because before they were had differences of by about an inch inch and a half okay so that's all I'm going to show you on the weave. The next part, the next step is I've done my weaving ahead of time like I always do because it takes me time because I have to rest my hand in between. And um, so this is the long end. This is the short end. And um, I'm giving you seven and a half feet. I had seven feet on this one. I did 12 feet on the other one. And then I guesstimated seven feet because I had way too much wire. And seven feet, I was like sweating um, because I thought I would run out of wire. I didn't, but it, I'm giving it another six inches to work with because when it's this short, it's hard. To, it's awkward. So seven and a half feet minimum um, if you use as much wire as I do. Everybody's different, of course. I tr try to do a very tight weave. So I probably use more wire than the average person. So if yours is longer, snip the wire off, not totally because we don't want it to poke us, about an inch. Give yourself an inch right there. Make it so both ends are about an inch, inch or half an inch. And that's just so that it's not poking us when we're working with it. Now we're going to take the wire and you have to make sure you know which end has the less wraps. So this is the tight wrap. That was the top way we held it. We actually want to flip it upside down. And now we got the short ends here. And we want uh, where there's less wraps around there in the middle because that's where we're going to try and make our teardrop shape. So we're going to try and bend it in half. And we want to make sure and be be patient with yourself. It takes time, especially if you want it to be perfect. Okay, so it's a wide pearl, so you got to make sure it's not too narrow at the bottom. And I lucked out, and it is pretty close to what I had before. My first one, I didn't luck out. It went, um, it went narrow on me and I couldn't get the pearl to sit right. So now I'm just going to put this pearl in here. I want it to sit about midway. So you want it to be as wide as that. So that's, I really lucked out. It's not perfectly 100% shaped, so I'm just going to do that. 
Um, the other one I had to open and close and open and close until I was happy. And and then you have to wiggle it and, you know, where, it, where it's nice, hold it firm so it doesn't bend, and then bend it in the other places. Um, it takes practice to know instinctively how to bend it. So, like I said, be patient with yourself. And it might not always work out the first time for you. Okay, that one's a little bit low, but it's still pretty. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to fight by making this wider at the bottom. Okay, so I've got the two tops together. I'm supporting them, and I'm taking these three wires, which I should have had this one a little bit longer, I see. And so I'm going to have to bend that with my pliers. So when I pulled it out demonstrating, I obviously pulled it too too short and didn't pay attention. So that's something to pay attention to. You need it a little bit longer to do your bend. Okay. So. And then we're going to bend. And ideally, I want you to pretend that all three are this as long as these guys um, I'll have to work with that one I'm going to snip it off giving myself some workspace bend space because I want to curl it around the edge there so I'm probably giving myself about another four millimeters or three millimeters past the weave snip it off and then I'm going to bend it to tuck it down like that so that it's touching the weave. And this short one, it might happen to you too, I just do my best to get that same effect. And it, I'm lucky that it was long enough that it wasn't too bad. Okay, so at this point I'm going to snip off the weaving wires. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have our teardrop shape. And um, we would do the bail next, but that's not the step I'm going to do. I'm going to put the pearl in there. No, I'm not going to put the pearl in there first because it'll make what we want to do up there give us more room to do it. And we're not fighting with it. Okay, so quick on the fly decision. Now, the innermost wire, which is the closest to the middle, which really, in other words, is this top one. We're going to make the bail with that. So I've got it tangled here, so I've got to untangle it from the other wires. Not sure how that happened, but it did. Okay, so I've got it straight up. I'm going to bend these down to get them out of my way. Okay, and we'll use them later. And the bail we want going front to back. And I always find the nicer bail comes from the back. Nicer looking. So I'm flipping it over. And I'm giving myself... There, I'm going to take the round nose pliers. I think about three wraps worth of space. Is that what I did here? Yeah, you need you need at least three wraps worth because we're gonna need some um, wrapping room for strength. Whoops, and we want to push it forward. See how I didn't do it forward? I had to adjust quickly. Okay, now from here, we want to take as big spot as we can on our round nose pliers and do two wraps. It's moving on me. It's feeling awkward trying to get in under the camera. Okay, so there we are. And I'm going to push this through on both sides. Make sure they're the same size. And it's getting caught on my table. Okay, there. And now. 
put the pliers in and try and do your wraps. Now they're going to be hidden, so they don't have to be perfect, but to, in order to be stronger, um, as close as possible, Okay, and I think that's pretty good. And at this point, I snip it. And, then, and if you're using sterling silver, yes, that is in a lot of excess wire, but it's a good length that you can make all kinds of things with. So you just tuck that wire away and reuse it. And not important to crimp this in for safety's sake just so that it's easy to wrap around okay there okay and then center your bale as best you can there okay so now what we're going to do is these two wires, we're going to put some decoration up here. But really, it's not, yes, it looks pretty, but it's not really meant for decoration. It's meant for binding this um, together really good because it is, this one is ended up being really strong. This one was a little bit wobbly. So, you know, it's, it's um, it doesn't hurt to make it extra strong and it actually adds character to uh, to your pendant so I'm going to oh I think what I did is I wrapped those ends around first one wrap around there and that really gave that bale strength and then I'm doing some swirls and these are freeform swirls so everyone's gonna look different and then I took the time to wrap around this wire and then that wire and did swirls in between. And um, so I went down the middle with the two wires. And this is why I didn't put the pearl in first. Gave us more working room. Okay, so I've got that wrapped around there. And I'm going to come up the left side and do another swirl there. And now I'm going to wrap around the right side. Come, go down the side and up the middle. And try not to bend your teardrop too much. Because then you have to reform it. And now I'm going to do just a couple more swirls. One there. I might even, well, I'm going to do a tiny, tiny one there. A tight, a tight one there. Okay. And right there. And I'm going to push it on over a little bit. Oh, I keep moving out of frame. I'm sorry. Okay, so I haven't done anything. I'm just looking at it. And go behind. And now, see, I gave it lots, lots of room. But it's good to have, um, you could go down four inches in length if you wanted to. I just wanted to make sure we had enough wire to do uh, as much decoration as we wanted to. Okay, so how do I want to do this? Okay, got a plan where you want to tuck it in. I'm going to tuck it in here. So I'm going to snip it, and yours will be different. You find the place to tuck, and you snip it about four millimeters or three millimeters longer so that you could do a round curve in there to tuck in the end. And you got to remember, this is 20 gauge wire, so it has some sturdiness to it. It's not like 
some other pieces where you make it with 22 gauge and it just doesn't have quite the strength and there it is and there's no rough edges anywhere to poke somebody and it's got decoration and it's strong and it's a little bit wild and um, see this one's really sticking out if you wanted to I'm not gonna use this for support I'm gonna use this spiral here for support and I'm gonna and this one and I'm gonna push it up a little bit just to center it off a little bit more see and that look better you can always fine-tune these little adjustments and this one's sticking up a little bit I'm just gonna push that down a little bit there I'm happy with that okay so the next thing is to make sure your weave is sitting um, level and that we didn't bend it and mine did, did pretty good but yours might not have fared as well the pearl has to sit like this okay so the next thing you do is you take your 12 inch piece of wire I believe I have my 12 inch piece and not my snips. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and put your pearl on it. And we're going to the back. And you're going to decide where that wire is going to sit to position it so it has a tight, fairly tight fit. And then you're going to take your permanent marker. And that's why we're working from the back. And we're going to make a line on the weave where we want to be. And then you'll take the pearl off your wire. And then you're going to take your wire and you want it to sit level. Because when you got the pearl on, this is hard to do. And you're fighting with it over and over again. Speaking from experience. Okay, so that's why... That's why we're using um, yeah, okay. there. Oh, I think I need to go a little bit lower. Okay, I'm just going to rub that off and remark it. Rub it off very gently. I don't want to take too much off. And I just wanted a smidge lower. I could have just marked a little bit lower and say, ah, it's the lowest part of it. Okay, so that's good. So I'm putting my permanent marker away. got my wire sitting where it wants to be center your wire approximately it doesn't have to be exact okay and now you're gonna hold that wire and you're gonna wrap I'm picking the right hand side because I'm right-handed wrap around the weave okay like that nice and tight and I'm going to actually crimp it down and that gives it strength and now the pearl goes on and the other side won't be as easy because now you have your pearl in the way and I probably because it's really tight up here I'm probably going to um, wrap around from the bottom, if that makes sense. This one goes up, this one's going down. I'd rather be the, them to be the same, so I should have maybe did, did the other one going down. And push it up through. Snug it up as best you can. 
Okay, and the weave will bend a little bit on you. And that's just an adjustment as we go. Okay, crimp it down. And that just really locks it in place. It doesn't have to be too hardly crimped. And I'm a little off. So this is where you really, I mean, I'm not quite level. And that could be just because of the way one's wrapped up and one wraps down. So I'm going to try and slide this a little bit. As long as the pearl is sitting good, that's what counts. And because of the shape of it, it is a little bit forgiving. Okay. Oh, it does have some movement. Okay. So now I notice that my inner touch. I didn't want it to have movement. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crimp it this way to tighten it. And that'll lock it into place. And I'm doing this from the back. Okay, you gotta be gently. I think we're good now. Okay, that was the first one that was loose. Okay, and you see, it did mar the weaving a little bit, but we're putting a design there because I knew that would happen. So the design, not only does it beautify, but it also hides little work flaws. So the next thing we're gonna do, and that's the front. I'm studying how I did these swirls. That went up. Yeah, now I'm confused. You know what? I'm going to pause while I study this so I don't waste your time. Okay, I know what I was doing. I was holding it upside down. That's why it didn't make sense to me. Okay, so, silly me, but that's what happens. So I want you, and we're going to have to do our side-by-side um, -side work to make it mirrored. We're going to do, we're going to pull this up, and I better get these out of the way so you're staying. And then we do a swirl. So this is a clockwise swirl like this okay and we're going to do counterclock in time and do a counterclockwise swirl so they look the same and that's pretty close okay and then I do another swirl here so like this so it's really simple, not so hard. So just make a little loop there. And that was clockwise, the other one's counterclockwise. We just continue with that same movement, but make a swirl. Okay, so it's like that. Now that and it's sticking up, so I'm gonna push it down with my thumb. This one wasn't too bad for sticking up. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're continuing that movement and you're pushing it down against the weave and holding it there and then we're bending it around the weave and we're gonna come up in the middle. And you gotta be careful not to pull this wire out of its place because I see that it's doing that so I'm pushing it back and supporting it and bending it again and you know at this point I'm going to cut it shorter just so I'm not unbending it give yourself about an inch and a half which would be 
four centimeters for the metric people. Okay, and then, then you can hold this, whoops, hold this, and then you can get the end up in the middle and gently pull it up. Okay, we're not gonna do the next step until we've done the other side because we want these two to sit level. Okay, so I'm curling this one around like that so it looks the same as that curl, which has ended up being fairly tight. Hold it still, support it. I'm gonna support it here and bend it around. Okay, so that worked a little bit better. And again, I'm gonna snip it off about four centimeters, an inch and a half. This is the back. I'm bending it like this so that I can get it. And I'm supporting, I'm supporting this wire as I'm doing. I'm holding that, bending this, push it up to the front. Okay, so this is the front. Take your pliers, pull it up. Now, are they the same level? No. So, let's make them the same level. Same height. And I see that this swirl looks bigger than this swirl. So, I'm actually going to take and crimp that swirl tighter a little bit. Be careful. Should have checked that before. But you know what? I'm going to leave it as is because I don't want to wreck it. It's handmade. It's going to be a little bit different. I'd say we're doing pretty good so far. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make spirals. So we want them to be the same size. You can uh, modify the size of the spiral you want to make. I think I have about three quarters of an inch length. So measure that. So we're going to snip it the same length. Okay, three quarters of an inch. Um, let's do it in millimeters instead. centimeters let's do two centimeters because that's nice and round and easy so you're we're measuring from the inside of the weave two centimeters so it's a little bit shorter up here yeah because that's going to be part of it so I'm measuring from the inside of the weave two centimeters and snipping. Doing the same, I'm flipping it upside down. I mean, this is still the front side, but just for ease of measurement. Move that that way. This is gonna be approximate. I'm making this one a little bit longer so that I can, because it's awkward, I'll snip it twice. Got to snip off another millimeter and a half. Okay, they should be. This one looks longer. I'm going to remeasure that. It needs snipping off too. Okay. Good to remeasure. And now I'm going to make a spiral and we're going to make it go down. Okay, so whatever way works for you to do that spiral. So you gotta make the bud of the spiral first.
and this one ended up being a little bit bigger than my other one and then you just work it into place I had to lift it up that's okay because it's not going to be caught on anything it sh should be pretty stable and sturdy and do the other one the same way make your bud I'm going to make a technique video for my members just on spirals. Okay, and now I need, because this is a little bit big, I'm going to move this down a little bit. Oh, now I moved it too far down. So you want to have it a similar placement which is fairly easy to do. You just adjust until it looks right. Okay, now I do have some Mars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking my file and I'm carefully, whoops, I bumped my phone. Carefully give it that buffed look for the whole thing. And then it looks like it's meant to do that. See, then it gives the brushed metal look, and that's okay. I had a person ask me how to not get the markings, and you know, there's this rubber stuff that you can coat your pliers with. I bought it, I used it, I didn't like it. It's supposed to help with that. Um, maybe if somebody else has some tips on how to use that, they can write in the comments. I encourage everybody to write in the comments because when you do that, it helps my videos do better. Um, I like as many comments as possible. There, it's done. Now I see this one needs pushing in. I'm gonna do a last minute tune-up. And I'm sure everybody needs to do last minute tune-ups. Just adjust everything to sit right and then when you're happy make sure your weave is level and it's done I'm move back well it's turned out really nice thank you for joining me in this video please comment uh, lots and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video God bless and bye for now